Hi, my name is John Paul Raj and I'm on a mission to make the learning of math fun. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. This video is part two on how to use the finance solver on the TI Inspire CX2 to do financial mathematics. If you haven't already seen part one where I explained the basic layout of the finance solver, how to enter the values, then I would suggest go and take a look at that video first. Only then you'll be able to follow through this video properly. But come back to this video. Okay, let's start. On this particular video, we're going to solve two different problems on compound interest using the finance solver on the TN Spy CX2. Now, two disclaimers. When it comes to compound interest, you must show your working with that formula for compound interest. Okay, all the working must be shown. This particular feature of the TN Spy CX2 using the finance solver is more beneficial for problems on loans and amortization. So why am I even bothering to do a video on Compound interest, great question. You know, it always helps to have a little check, you know, when you're doing your question, even using the formula of compound interest, it always helps to have that faithful companion called the TN by CX2 to check that your answers are correct. So as far as compound interest is concerned, you need to show your traditional working and not just rely on the finance solver application. But when it comes to loans and amortization, there are certain questions that cannot be solved without the use of the finance solver. So that we will discuss on a different video. The second thing that I want to point out before we go into this problem is that, you know, when it comes to questions on simple interest, you cannot use the finance solver. There again, you have to resolve to the traditional technique, you know, PRT over 100, that formula, the traditional formula. So you cannot use the finance solver to solve questions on simple interest. Having said that, let's look at the problem for the day. This is Rafael who's investing Brazilian 5,000 real in a bank offering 2.5% interest compounded annually. That's important, compounded annually, all right? Calculate the amount of money he has after five years. After five years, how much money does he have? So I have prepared a very different layout this time. Uh, on the top, you can see my working. That's my iPad. On this side, we have the uh, calculator menu. And I've not even shown the... Uh, the keypad, all right, because we're just entering numbers, but I'm just going to show you the the box where we have the finance solver. That's more important to know what values are being entered where, all right? So for those of you, like I said before, if you haven't seen the video of the basic features, just go and see that first part and then and only then this will make sense, all right? That being said, I'm just going to go ahead and add a calculator page and I'll make my way to the finance solver. And there you can see the finance solver here. And I'm just going to enter the values as per the question. And you can take a look at the question uh, that I'm solving, right? So he's investing 5,000 real, Brazilian real. So when he's investing, that's your present value. And you need to enter that with a negative sign. So I'm just going to go here, here and that's my PV uh, with a negative sign, 5,000 out here, all right? Uh, the interest was 2.5, if I'm not mistaken, percent per annum, okay? When it's not indicated in the question, when it doesn't say percent per annum, you can assume that it is per annum. But in cases where, you know, it's a different uh, periodic interest, then you need to convert it into uh, per annum before you enter it here. So the interest rate that you enter here should be percent per annum, and that's 2.5, right? So there we go. And uh, hit tab to go through the next field. And I'm not yet entered, and that's because we have this here that uh, it's compounded annually, all right, compounded annually. So what's going to happen is that the payment per year is going to be one and compounded, uh, let me just show you that thing, okay? The payment per year, that's going to be one, compounded annually, that's one. And so it's going to be one times five, compounded annually, it's just compounded being once, okay? Just once. So it's one times five giving you N as the number of payments. This is not number of years. So I'm not entering five here to denote the number of years. I've entered five here to say that, well, that's a number of payments because it has been compounded once every year, that's compounded annually for five years. So one times five equals five payments. Okay, that's not five years, that's five payments. Uh, then we tap down, we've already entered the interest. Uh, present values, negative 5,000 payments, no further payments. This is not that kind of a scheme. This is just a compound interest question. Future value is what we are interested in. So I'm just going to uh, tap down to see whether I've entered everything. And we are interested in the money after five years at the end. So that should be at the end. So let me just go back to my future value. Once I'm here, hit enter. And that should be my answer, 5657. Or I'm just going to write that thing here. So calculate the amount of money he has 
after five years, this was Brazil and Real, right? So I'm, I have to use that same notation, BRL, five, six, five, seven, and round it off to two decimal places whenever you have money. All right, keep that in mind. Can you guys see what I'm writing? Yeah, there you go. Uh, 5657.04. Uh, that's Brazilian real uh, at the end of five years. Cool. Now, the second part of the question says, after five years, after those five years, Rafael withdraws all that money. What does he withdraw? He's obviously withdrawn all that 5657.04, all the money, and puts it in another bank that offers... 2.5% interest per annum compounded monthly. That's the difference. This is being compounded monthly now. 2.5%, um, that's the same interest rate per annum as you can see here, right? So they will specify, especially whenever the compounding period is different. In the first part, remember the compounding period was annual. So they just mentioned, you know, 2.5%. And whenever it's not mentioned, it needs to be interpreted as percent per annum. So in this case, 2.5% per interest per annum compounded monthly the question is calculate the amount of money that he has in the bank after three more years so let me just make those changes here this 5657.04 now becomes the present value right with the negative sign by the way so let me see whether i can copy and paste this uh entry here uh i go there yes but i need to make sure that it's with a negative sign all right you all know by now why negative because it's leaving whenever there's a cash flow out of your hand whenever money leaves your hand it needs to be indicated with a negative sign all right, uh, now what do we have to change? Payments per year, compounded monthly, compounded monthly, all right? That means uh, there's going to be every year 12 compounding periods, okay? So monthly, right? So 12 compounding periods, and that's going to change our N, right? Because it's 12 uh, for every year, and we want for three years, 12 times three should be a 36. I hope you understand how I'm getting this, okay? And it's not... 36 years and is the 36 number of payments and how do we get that well that there were 12 payments per year which comes from this idea of compounded monthly and the total number of years is three okay rest of the uh, value should be the same so we now go back to our fv which was a future value go there and remember we need to hit enter only then will it compute and when you hit enter it says 6097.15 let's make it one six okay so our answer to part B, it says calculate the amount of money that he has in the bank after another three years should be BRL. Keep the right uh, 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 unit. Okay, this is uh, Brazilian real and it's 6097.15. Six, zero, six, zero, I'm just going to round it up to 16. Okay, can you guys see this? What I've written? Maybe I should use another color. Uh, there we go. Uh, BRL. 6097.16 hope this is clear all right now let's look at another question shall we the second part of here can you guys see this is a very small frame this time but i just wanted to show both the question the working and this finance solver so that you know what values are being entered where and that is the most important thing about the finance solver knowing when to enter uh, with a negative sign knowing how to enter that capital and those are the key things cool all right for the next question i'm just going to enter a new page okay because you know what happens is uh, i'll show you what's going to happen if i hit escape i will go to the calculator page all right so that finance solver that box is gone and you might think that the answer is gone but actually you can recall it because all those values are stored as variables here as you can see all those calculations here as you can see tvm or tvm actually stands for time value money that's a synonym for the uh, finance solver all right so when you say tvm fv dot fv that's the future value so you can just hit that and you can get the value as 6097.16, which was the answer that we reported here. So even on the calculator page, when you see that the uh, the box is gone, the entry box is gone, you can still recall all those terms just by going to the variable key. I know you can't see the variable key uh, because uh, it's on the keypad. But uh, yeah, for those of you who haven't seen my earlier videos on the keypad and where to find the variable, I'm going to link those videos in the description box below. Go ahead and take a look at that but at least you can see this pop-out menu that comes out when you click variable, all right? So even if you say tvm.i, uh, that's the interest. And when I hit that, that will be entered. Now, because these are stored as variables, if I go back to that um, uh, finance menu, it will overwrite, but because it's a variable, it will stay in that same problem, okay? So there'll be too many variables if you're trying to use that. My suggestion is just enter a new problem so that, you know, the number of variables relating to a particular problem will be minimal and then you'll be able to use it 
effectively. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and insert a new uh, problem that is calculate a page because we are dealing with uh, the finance solver. All right, so this is the finance solver for the second problem. So we've got a blank, fresh, new finance solver and everything that's stored here is going to be in problem number two. And you can recall that, especially in the time of the exam, dealing with problems in pages really helps, okay? Uh, here we go. Alexis invests a uh, Russian ruble 80,000 in a bank that offers interest of 3% per annum compounded quarterly. Do you see that? That Those are the important things. They compounded quarterly. 80,000 in a bank. Uh, so let's just enter these values. Invest. That means cash flow out of your pocket. Money is leaving your pocket. Negative. And that goes into the present value, right? So just hit tab and negative. 80,000 and uh, what do we have? 3% uh, per annum. Okay, that's clearly mentioned here. As I said, every time, you know, it's a different compounding period, they will mention that as 3% per annum. All right, uh, and so I'll just uh, go to that field. I need to enter three. Uh, what do we have? A compounded quarterly, so I just come down to payments per year. Quarterly means every year, you know, four times every year, uh, the payments are being made by the bank, okay? Although the money is going to be collected at the end of, you know, six years, something like that, according to the question, uh, it's going to be compounded. That means the principal is going to be changed. So, you know, there is some payment coming through. So four times every year times six, because we are interested in how much Alexis has in the bank at the end of six years. So six times four. Why? Because it's four times every year. Four times six is 24. And so N should be 24. Remember, N refers to the number of payments, the total number of payments. So when you now scroll down, we have entered everything else. This um, CPY will be compounded accordingly to the N and PPY that you entered. And they're going to get the money at the end of those six years. Let's go to this field, which is future value. That's what we are looking for. Hit enter. And then we've got our answer as 95. 713.02 that's russian rubles by the way i'm just going to write it here uh, so the answer to part b is going to be rub uh, what was that 95713.08 cool all right now the second part of this question says calculate how long how long it takes how long means how many years after how many years Will his original amount of money double? Double means he's invested 80,000 rubles, 80,000 Russian rubles. And how long will it take? How many years it will take for that to become 160,000 rubles? Let's see. Okay. Remember, our N is the number of payments, total number of payments. So what we're going to do is that the present value is still negative 80,000. And what we're going to do is that we are just going to, the rest of the interest values is the same, right? So the future value must be 160,000. So we're going to change this one this time. 160,000. Uh, and we want to calculate N. So let's make, come to that entry, right? We are coming here. And remember, it's not N. We have to use this to then figure out what the total number of years is going to be. So I'm just going to come here and I'm going to hit enter. When I say enter, it gives me 92.765, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, so let's preserve all that accuracy. And remember what I just did, okay? The field that you're looking for, that's where you maneuver, that's where you position your cursor and you hit enter and it will calculate automatically. So this is a unique feature of the finance solver where the answer is not reported somewhere else. It will solve and report the answers within the cells itself. You just need to go to that specific field, what you're looking for. In this case, we're looking for capital N to then convert to the number of years. And so I went to capital N, that field which says capital N and I hit enter and it gave me the value. Now, how do we use this? So I hit escape and I come to the calculator screen. Remember I said, all those values are stored. That's what we're going to make use of. So I just go to VARS key and I bring back those values. I have TVM.N, which refers to the, the N that is the number of payments. And there we've got, you know, this is rounded off to two decimal places. When I hit uh, the top arrow key, I can get back all those decimal values. That's how you preserve accuracy. You can divide by the PPY, payments per year. So again, you can go to VAR, the VARS key, and then you can bring back TVM.PPY. And now when you hit enter, it'll give you the value as 23.19. This is how you can use those stored variables. Those stored var values are now stored as variables, as you saw, and you can bring back those values in your calculator page and calculate that the total number of years is 23.19. And the number of years can then be, uh, you can just say 0 0.19, 
times uh, 12 uh, to get you the number of months. So that will be like uh, uh, 23 years, two months and almost three months. Okay, so 23 and I'll write it as after 23.19 years, which is almost uh, about 23 years and what's that three months because i'm taking the 28 days is almost like uh three months so you can see this answer right i'll just uh, bring it back to my uh, ipad here now so almost after 23 years and three months his original amount of money is going to double so this is how you can use the finance solver to solve questions on compound interest i'm going to see you all in the next video